Okay, well, uh, here we are. We've drained a ton of, of, of this fat out of the bacon. And let's say with the apple, but I'm going to have to be honest. Although it was tasty the other day, it's not quite as tasty today. Um, I don't think uh, the fat content and the, you know, the potential for clogging your arteries is worth making this particular recipe. Um, the onions and bacon, again, when, when it was fresh off the, um, the skillet the other day, was very tasty. Today, it's kind of like marinated into a, the onions have kind of overpowered everything else, uh, which wasn't the case the other day. So it's not good as a leftover. Um, I think if I were to make it again, I would not put in the onions, just, you know, make the apples on their own in, in a light butter instead of um, doing it with, um, uh, I guess, you know, in the bacon fat. It's just too rich a meal, uh, knowing what this kind of stuff can do to your insides, regardless of the taste. It is a 19th century dish. It is interesting to taste that little piece of history, but it's hard to justify it today. It's a little too rich, unless you're really going to, you know, go out there and burn, you know, six to 8,000 calories in... Um, and, you know, field labor. So I would suggest uh, this recipe is probably better, you know, not to make it. It's just probably too rich uh, of a food. It's not as tasty as a leftover. So if you're going to make it, I would suggest instead just uh, making the onion separate, making the bacon separate, making the apples separate in a, a lower cal way so you can enjoy the individual flavors because the onions uh, take over as time goes on. You can't, I mean, all it tastes like now is, you know, fried onions. It's kind of weird. So just passing that along. But thanks for watching.